Welcome back to an unbelievably epic episode of Petrol Poodle. Now obviously some of you are already going to know, those of you who are willing to try new things on the menu and don't just discard things at face value, those of you will know exactly why this is an incredibly special review. There will be some of you that are going, the most epic review at two overpriced Renaults? Have you lost your mind? What sad little life, Jane. Well, it turns out some people did agree with you. Back in 2008, when this puppy first arrived, as epic as it was, the R26R, it actually really struggled to sell at all. It really didn't kind of get moving, really in part thanks to the 2008 recession. But it seemed that people at first didn't really seem to understand the value of just how special this car was. And actually, they kind of struggled to sell it. Here we are today, and now you'll struggle to buy one. And when these were 23,000 pounds new in 08, currently the only one on auto trader with 40,000 miles and full history is 27 grand so we clearly have something very special here now weather permitting i am going to be trying to review both of these cars today i've driven five hours north to see these two and again you're thinking five hours for a pair of renaults well each of these is rarer than a LaFerrari on the road. We have 33 of these on, on the UK roads right now and about 33 of these on the UK roads, some are sort. So I can't tell you how rare these are. Let's go on to the R26R, shall we? What does make this car so special? Well, for a teenager, not a very exciting headline when you say the R26 was 230 brake horsepower and the special edition 230 brake horsepower. Adding no extra power didn't really sound very exciting, but actually those of you who know the Colin Chapman way, light is right, will understand they, they prioritise the correct things. 120 kilos lighter is an insane weight loss. That's that. This is already a light hot hatch for what it is. So you've got carbon fibre bonnet, you've got polycarbonate windows, which I reminded myself by leaning and nearly popping through it. They removed the rear seats entirely. We've gone for carbon fiber Sarbelt racing seats. These, these buckets are some of the comfiest and best bucket seats I've ever sat in. They're incredible. The optional titanium exhaust, which this one has, the Ak Akrapovich, Akrapovich, I have an argue in the comments, I can't remember which way you're supposed to say it. They've clearly gone to town on making lighters right. The big question is, is it £20,000 special over an R26? And if we have time today, how does it compare to the new kid on the block. Right, let's have a look. So, before you start your journey, obviously you're going to be looking at the interior of the R26R, aren't you? Now, potential buyer or not, you still have to think about what would it be like to spend 27 grand and to be sat in a 2007, 2008 kind of Renault McGann interior. Well, actually, do you know what? My memory served me a little bit unkindly. It wasn't so great in here. And okay, it does look a bit cheap and dull in, in some places. That's kind of of the period. But when you're sat looking at these incredible seats, this uh, awesome red roll bar behind you and a little Alcantara on the steering wheel, it's definitely a more exciting place to be. <laughs> You've got some slightly odd CD placement down here. You've got some weird kind of compartments under here, a transit handbrake. It, it's all quite funny really, but it's not too bad. Those of you who are eagle-eyed and Renault fanboys will already be screaming and typing away, it's got aftermarket CD player, that wasn't in there. Well, no, it didn't come with a CD player, but you know, driving to the Nürburgring and Spa, you need a radio, don't you? So fair enough, that's been put in and will obviously be taken out for sale. This steering wheel, massive, massive thanks to Steve. What an absolute legend. He's had this in the garage for nine years to keep it pristine. And he's had an aftermarket wheel on for his track days and things. So to have to get this out especially and put it back on and to put the original gear lever back in is a really generous touch. And actually it's, it's amazing. It feels like this has just rolled out the factory and never been used. Anyway, you're obviously itching to see this driving. I'm obviously itching to drive it. So let's crack on. So first impressions, whilst we're waiting for the car to warm up, <laughs> this is already vastly different to an R26. It's, the, it's so much louder in here. It's, it's, it's so much more ready to go, ready to play. I can, I can tell this is gonna be pretty special, I'm not gonna lie. Now, whilst we're driving on the way to this incredible scenery, I don't normally ask for likes early in a video. I like people to leave a like at the end if they really enjoyed it. But I would ask in this instance that we, if you've, if you've been enjoying this video so far and you want to say thanks to Steve and show me that it's worth my effort driving five hours for these kind of cars, please do leave a like. I really, really would appreciate it.
<laughs> I've been driven the R26 last year and the difference in this titanium exhaust makes. Um, the previous car it still sounds fun, but it kind of sounds like a giant librarian telling you to shut up. It's like whoosh, whoosh, like that. So I was kind of expecting like, I'm not going to hear much here. It's going to be a bit whooshy, but this thing barks. God. Okay, no car has the right to, to go that quickly for 230 horsepower. That's not right, that's, that's crazy. So I'm gonna put the weight figure on screen now. It's about 1240 kilos, it's, it's something like that. And the torque in this, this is the 230 brake horsepower standard map. This is rapid, like this is six seconds to 60, but it feels quicker. You know, once you're in gear and moving, it's faster than it sounds, trust me. Um, it just picks up pace. There's a little bit of turbo lag and spoiler alert, Steve took me out last night in the Trophy R. That's another animal. I, I can't believe the lack of turbo lag in that car. It's, it's, it's insane. And that car, again, punches way above the horsepower figure. So I can see why Renault didn't really need to focus on that too much. And I'm so glad that they had the ethos of let's nail the handling, let's make this thing exceptional um, in the bends. Now, my memory of the R26, despite what I read online, um, you know, that the 26R is kind of softer, more compliant and weighs less, I seem to remember the R26 being a bit softer sprung than this, um, actually, and maybe that's just, you know, sign of different springs that somebody else has put on that. It's kind of hard to know its history. You can feel the bumps in the road. It does feel firm, but nowhere near as firm as my standard Honda Civic that I'm using as a daily now. So it's nothing that's going to beat you up, but you can tell this car is serious and it's, it's, it's going to take whatever you throw at it. Now, speaking of whatever you throw at it, fantastic. I just love the fact Steve is not a collector that's just sat on it and kept it babied. He, uh, he is someone that has taken it to many, many track days and he has properly got the value out of what this thing's about. And it's, it's refreshing. It's so boring seeing these cars with delivery mileage going for mad money. You know, he appreciates what it can do. It's been out on track a lot of times and it has not had a single issue in, in the nine years he's had it and countless track days. It has treated him brilliantly. Oh, hello. Jesus, this picks up pace. So let's chuck it in. Oh, that's mad. Wow. That LSD is doing a stunning job. It's a wet day. I've got the power down in the bends. There's no scrabble. It just pulls and pulls and pulls. That suspension I spoke about earlier being a little bit firm and crashy, you know, it's the common story. When you're around town going slowly, often these things do feel a bit firm, but up at speed, you don't feel it at all. It just feels controlled and planted and set. And it's kind of saying, come on, mate, give it more than that. It tell, it's telling you, you can do more. Let's go into the nitty gritty details. Now, those of you who've seen my RS250 review will know that I was quite impressed by that electric steering. And I know that was their first electric system. This was their last hydraulic and clearly they'd spent a lot of time just getting it right. This is really, really good steering. It's not as communicative and as telepathic as the MX-5, but well, my MX-5, but you can tell what's going on. You don't think about what's happening at the front. It's, it's really nicely weighted. Gear change, a lot snappy, a lot tighter than I was remembering well from that last R26. Quite a long gear throw, which normally is a bad thing, but given how far down the gearbox is in this, actually having it close to the steering wheel is a benefit I wasn't expecting to appreciate. The brakes, yeah, they're nice and progressive as well. They don't kind of bite and make your head butt the dash, but they're not spongy and, you know, to be fair, I'd way prefer these brakes to the RS250. Much, much nicer, if you ask me. The way this thing is handled so far, I don't, I don't know what else I could be asking for. It just does everything you want. 
But here's a crucial thing. I find some cars, for example, the Boxster S, you know, it's, it's so capable, but in a way that the chassis doesn't move around very much, you feel a bit too much like you're on rails. You don't feel that excitement of the, of the body moving around. And personal taste, I like a car where I feel like I'm kind of wrestling it a little bit. And with this, I feel like there's, a, there's, enough, there's enough lean, there's enough movement going on that it feels like you're kind of taming a beast. It's really good fun. Actually, on the point of the Boxster S, to give you an idea of how fast this 230 horsepower hot hatch can go, obviously we all know by now that it's set the fastest front wheel drive lap time of the Nürburgring at the time. But to put that in perspective, it was still about a second or two quicker than a 987 Cayman S. I mean, stick those side by side, you would not expect the, the Renault Megane to, to go faster. That tells you how well judged this thing is. Well, shit the bed. <laughs> that was pretty, that was amazing. That was that was awesome, quite frankly. Um, and yes, it is raining, but do you know what? You don't come five hours up for nothing. We're going to walk around with an umbrella protecting the camera, and we are going to do this today. So, what happens? Well, eleven years later, we got the Trophy R that comes out, and now this is going to be a bit of an interesting one because. The trophy before was kind of met with a bit of a mixed reception. You know, people were saying amazing on track, but a bit too firm for the road. Um, very, very crashy for, well, at least for the UK roads anyway. At the same time, you've got people feeling a little bit divisive about the rear wheel, four wheel steering, and is that added unnecessary weight? Does it really make that much of a difference? You know, it's a bit contentious. So, what did Renault learn from last time? Well, 23K in a financial recession didn't go down very well. Well, let's do a car which can be 72,000 pounds. That should sell like hotcakes. But to be fair, they started at about 52,000 and it was kind of some incredibly rare options. The only a couple of cars in the country had the carbon alloys available that gets you up to 72. I'm not gonna go through all the trim and spec, but basically you're looking between 50 and 70K, which is still a lot of money, isn't it? For a hot hatchback, full stop, stick a Renault badge on and it becomes a harder thing to justify. What do we have? It's the same story again as the, as the R26. It's the, exactly the same power output as the Trophy. This is another one where it's about 120, 150 kilos. I'll put it on screen now. You know, they dropped a lot of weight from this again. So starting at the front, we have got the same carbon fiber bonnet. Now it's not exposed carbon on the top, despite this little bit here, but when you look underneath, it is a full carbon fiber bonnet. They also save some weight with the Saar Belt racing seats again. These are absolutely brilliant. I'd say they're more comfortable than the R26R, but I say more comfortable, but I, as I said earlier, I kind of prefer the, the squeeze of those. Moving into the back here, again, same story, we've lost the rear seats, but this time there's no roll cage. Instead, they've made space here and a kind of a bespoke area for sticking all your, your track day tires in. They all clip in very cleverly. Really, really nice touch that. This time we've got thinner glass rather than the plastic windows. And onto that controversial step, the four wheel steer. They decided to ditch it entirely, save weight, and the general consensus is, it handles better for it. So it makes you wonder whether that was actually really worth it or if it was just kind of pushing tech for the sake of it. We've got the Akrapovich, Akrapovich, again, have an argument in the comments. We've got one of those exhausts as standard. Also have the carbon fiber rear diffuser. I think it's time to jump inside and look at what 11, 12, 13 years of progress does to an interior. So let's have a look. Well, my God. What a difference in here. Um, you know, if, depending on who you look at and who you watch on, online, some people give this interior a slightly hard time, but you know, if you're in Gulf R kind of money, it should be better and it should be special. Do you know what? I think to me, that just sounds like car journalists looking for something negative to say. I don't agree with that. I think it's really, really nice in here. You know, and maybe it's this edition particularly, but you've got the Alcantara here. You've got these, these, these Saab out seats are even nicer to look at than the others. They look a bit more kind of grown up, higher quality, definitely. Alcantara the whole way around the wheel, not leather at the sides and Alcantara at the top and bottom. It's just got a much, much nicer design language. That's not really a surprise to anyone, but it, there is a huge jump up in quality. You know, this is a, a massive jump up in quality. I can understand criticism if you're looking at the £70,000 range, but whatever, you know you're getting something insanely special. And 33, 34 of these in the country is 
is crazy. You're kind of buying the exclusivity. Anyway, so they've reduced the size of the big central screen to save weight. More, more weight saving, the size of a screen. Um, but it's all nice and logical. This CAE shifter is absolutely awesome. It looks mega and I've never driven a car with one, so I'm very excited to see what all the fuss is about and why people spend so much money on this stuff. Now, on this, uh, the RS monitor up here, I mean, it tells you everything. It gives you every metric you could ever care for, metrics you don't care for, tells you how many people your partner slept with. It tells you everything. I mean, there's more than you could ever want there. Very, very clever, lap timers, you, yeah, you bloody name it. You know, if I, was, if I was gonna try and be critical, journalist hat here, you know, when you turn around, it's not as exciting that you haven't got your big red roll cage there, etc. Yeah, I'm only nitpicking really here. You gotta say something negative. We just become a YouTuber that laughs and smiles at everything. And I don't wanna be that person. Overall, great place to be. And let's find out if it's a great car to drive. And so now we're in the Trophy R. I'm still pinching myself that I'm even able to drive a car where there's only 32 on the public road. Anyway, how does it feel straight off the bat? I'm shocked at how different this feels. It's, it's tighter, everything feels, it just feels much newer. And, and actually I was worried that newer versus old school and analog, I thought this might have less character. I think that's probably what a lot of people would think. Well, so far, this is already more exciting to drive. It just feels like a more serious weapon, but not in the kind of, oh look, we're bouncing over every imperfection in the road. What a track toy. Now, speaking of the ride quality, that takes me on nicely to these Olin's dampers, doesn't it? Now, they're actually adjustable and in a super duper simple, clever way. You walk up to the wheel, you find the little thing, you twist it, it changes the setting, you can do it in 10 seconds. Genius, absolutely genius. And we're on the third harshest or third firmest setting. And I would say that this is still riding better than the R26R, despite the extra weight of this car. Again, something I wasn't expecting. I'm told by Steve that his wife has commented that in the comfier setting, this is comfier than their VW Tiguan. A big SUV with its long wheel travel, mental. I, I would love to experience that. But um, anyway, so yeah, I was saying, I was expecting this to feel a little bit kind of digital, a bit new age, a bit kind of lost its, lost its feel a little bit. Completely wrong. It is so sharp. And I completely understand what he was saying yesterday, that this is the surgeon's scalpel. Whereas the other, whereas the R26 is a bit more of a sledgehammer in, in comparison to this. Forgetting the dynamics, what does technology bring? What does 10, 11 years of development bring? Well, the fact that you can change so much about this car's personality through the RS monitor. We're in the kind of neutral setting. You've got comfort as well, but we're in neutral. So the exhaust is quietened down. It's, I mean, it still pulls really well. And obviously it's got all the aids on still. I'm going to be sticking it in sport mode shortly and you'll see the difference that makes with the pops and bangs. But again, it's another advantage of buying something more modern that you can use this for actually far more than just the track. I feel like the R26R is so special. It's so, so, so good at what it does. But it's, and you could do a long journey in it, definitely, definitely. But it's not the car you'd want to do a long journey in out of these two. Um, and that, again, that actually kind of has surprised me. Maybe that makes me a bit of an idiot, but not my problem. So we're now in sport mode. We're about to do a second gear pull. <laughs> Fucking hell. Whoa, that's a different animal. That, that 60 odd horsepower does not tell the full story. That's something else. And again, it's not peak power here. It's not the peak power, it's the difference. It's that turbo lag, it is it basically gone. It's a very different engine in the way it behaves. That's a lot quicker. And you know, my dad used to have Impreza STIs with 300 plus horsepower in them. More powerful than this on paper, but that turbo lag, completely different. This would smash that in a straight line, and especially around a track. And I'm a big Subaru fanboy, so I wouldn't say that willy-nilly. This, this 296 brake horsepower, 1.8 litre engine, originally started life as a 1.6 litre Nissan Juke engine that's been bored out. Shitting Nora. Oh, there's those pops. Oh, 
shock. Young YouTuber likes pops and bangs, whatever next. Now, I'm not normally a, big, a bigger fan, but it definitely adds in this. There's definitely more cabin noise. Well, there's more, to me, there's more aural drama in here. It sounds great. It drives harder. And now that I've just thrown it into a corner a bit, and now that we're in sport mode, this steering is better. I, I, this is the first time I've driven electric steering that is, is better than the hydraulic uh, counterpart. It, it really is. There's something really clever here with the weighting going on. They've judged it so well. And Steve informs me that you know, on track, full, full lock in R26, in comparison to this, it's got a much tighter, much shorter steering ratio, or whatever the you know, correct term for that is, faster steering. This is an amazing, amazing piece of kit. It's definitely worth 50K. It's definitely worth 50K. This is a car that's really almost over capable for the public road. He took me out in it yesterday at what, probably seven or eight tenths. And to me, that was my equivalent of 11 tenths. That was absurd. If you're gonna buy one of these for the public road, Make sure you actually take it on a track. That's where it really belongs. And not because it's so punishing that you can't enjoy it on the road. It's just so over capable. It's, it's incredible. No wonder there's such like a Renault religion around this, around Renault Sport. The, the, the followers, the love for this brand, I, I, I get it. I get it and I, th I think the joke's been on me that it's taken me Still only a couple of years ago to, to recognize how, how amazing these cars have been under my nose the whole time. Absolutely class. Okay, and now on to the conclusion. And I did ask two questions originally. One, is this worth the extra money over the R26 standard car? And second, of course, how do they actually compare? I'll keep it quick. Let's go to the R26R comparison. Okay, yeah, fair enough. You can spend six, seven thousand on an R26. You could spend maybe a fraction of that money, four or five k, on turning it into something like this. And I'm I'm pleased for anyone that has done that. Great. You know, if you can't afford a 26R and you can't find one, do that. It'll be a bloody stunning car. But it feels special. You're in this car. You know it's the real deal. The carbon fibre, this, the that, the little touches, the the windows. There's just all these little things, and it adds up to a properly honed product, a, a, one of the best things Renault's ever made. It's seriously special. If you've got the money to buy one and you see one for sale, it will basically pay you to own it. Onto the Trophy R. Well, I said before, I had my preconceived ideas. I thought the older analog car with its classic hydraulic steering, blah, blah, blah. I kind of thought that was gonna be my, my favorite. It's either gonna be far too crashy because of what I know about the Trophy or it's just gonna be trying to please everyone and it will have lost its special analog edge. Well, I was dead wrong and that's why before you start jumping in comments and making up your mind about cars you've never driven, it really pays to drive things before you, you have weigh an opinion in. This thing's incredible. It's like that, but every dial is turned up to 10. The steering, despite being electric, is better steering. It's actually more comfortable, it's adjustable. You've got all these clever things going on. The interior is better but it hasn't made it a more boring drive. I, I don't know how they've managed to find every single thing balanced. Is 50,000 pounds too much for a Renault Megane? Well, normally yes, but when you've got this and the work that's gone into this and how perfectly judged everything is, this suddenly makes a case for itself against an M3, a C63S and whatever else you'll find, F-types, etc. You know, this suddenly does make a big case for itself and you know that you're an incredibly exclusive club when, you, when you've got one of these. So. Personal favourites, I could I could probably convince myself that either's my favourite. If I was a big track goer and had the money to keep doing track days, every day this. Given that I like to have cars that I can push harder and take them to their edge and find that limit within reason, I'd actually go for the R26R despite all that. And that's why I like my MX-5 and things. I like being able to push a car properly and not drive an 812 super fast at 1% of its, of, its, of its power. Anyway. I'll probably change my mind on the way home. What do you think? What, 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 what are your thoughts on this? And one more thing, huge thanks to Steve. I mean, he's just a name to you, but he's a viewer to me. He's just one of you sat at home. He's reached out, he's made loads of effort. He took this back, he's, he's insured this and taxed it just for a month, just so I can drive it. Please give a like to thank Steve and show everyone it's been worth their time and effort. If you've got something at home you want to see reviewed, your car or a friend's car, get in touch. It's petrolpoodle at gmail.com. I'd love to see you on the next one. So please do like and subscribe. Take care, see you later.